Hey guys, Adam here. Today I'm going to be talking about some painting techniques. And uh, let me first off start to say I've been painting for 25 years. I don't use any airbrush or anything like that. That stuff is really cool. I just never had a chance to learn. Everything I do is with paint, brush, traditional. And uh, I will say that my belief is that painting is about 90% technique and 10% skill. Now that 10% skill can go a long, long way, but everything that you guys are seeing here, nothing is really crazy difficult to do. Uh, I've been painting for a while, like I said before, about 25 years, and my goal in this video is just to give you guys some quick tips and tricks on some painting techniques, uh, specifically doing this weathering effect on uh, vehicles. Now, I do this for one or two reasons. First off, I really like the style of it. It makes it feel more real to me, but also it's a quick, fast, and easy technique, and you can knock this stuff out really quickly. And that's kind of my goal. I've been painting for a long time. If I take the time and really put into it, I can wet blend stuff perfectly. I do have those skill sets, but at the end of the day, when you put that little 28 millimeter model on the table with 100 other miniatures, it kind of gets lost, and I don't really get the reward out of it that I want. You know, it's, it's a difference between doing a game piece and a kind of a show piece. And my focus is on doing a game piece. A really good high-end tabletop, you know, levels. But at the same time, doing a technique that's fast enough that you're not going to eat up all of your time. And you're still going to be able to play a lot of games. So, as you guys see, the Storm Fang and Storm Wolves are the, the new vehicles that I just finished. This uh, set right here actually is kind of a big deal for me. This is... I finally completed everything in the Space Wolves catalog. I mean, don't get me wrong, guys. I've got plenty of Space Wolves stuff painted. But this stuff represents the last piece of each of the box that's getting painted. And it's a milestone. So, but we're going to talk about doing some different techniques. All right, guys. So, I'm really happy with the way these turned out. As you guys will see, I'm able to do some really good wear on some of the, uh, the hull of the vehicle. Little things like this on the engine. Just uh, really happy about it. Really adds character. But this is kind of a long process to develop this technique. And at first, I had some failures with the technique. It was overdone. It wasn't balanced well. But this is an old Rhino. I probably painted this thing, I don't know, 15 years ago. When, whenever this model first came out, I bought it. And, you know, I spray painted the whole hull, the whole hull, the normal space wolf color that came in the can at that time. You guys noticed little tone changes. But you guys can see I went back and, like, added you know, paint chips in the armor, and it just didn't, it doesn't translate very well. I mean, it's not bad. I don't, I'm not going to go and repaint this guy, but just at the time, it wasn't bad. I was trying something new, but it just didn't work. It didn't look, didn't look the way I wanted it to look. And so, you know, I kept on working on it, and finally I got a technique that I'm doing today, and this is a later translation of that technique, where I'm actually adding the blue paint, the space work gray paint, or shadow gray, whatever you're calling it, after I've kind of chosen the areas that I'm going to to uh, have the metallic color kind of coming through. And how I do that, and I'll pull some uh, some models out here. Like this is, you know, just a, a plain black drop pot, as you guys can see. I'm not even done priming it yet. Um, and what I do is, after I'm done priming it, I build up layers of metallic dry brushing on it like this. Now what this does is it gives me certain areas certain kind of like organic, I guess you'd say artifacts or whatever, or um, just the way that the, the paint hits that. And so like, all right, this get, got caught by the brush when I'm painting it. So it's reasonable to say that heat or, you know, explosions or anything else would kind of hit those raised surfaces the same way. This one, I just kind of, I think I just put one layer on there and we go do some more. But what ends up happening is it really starts to translate well into areas that I can go back and actually hit with the blue paint and uh, other areas that leave the metallic stuff through. Let me grab my next thread that I'm working on. He got a little bit overpainted, but the reason I did that is because I really want him to be worn. I want him to be so, there's like almost no blue left on him because he's just, you know, the paint of his armor just got scraped from years and years of damage. So there'll be blue on the gauntlet here, blue on the shoulder, but like the knee pad right here, probably no blue at all. 
just on the outside. But it gives me some really good areas to highlight that. I'm really enjoying that. And what happens is you get areas like like this that are really you know, kind of grab you, areas like this that I'm able to go back and add the paint. A really simple technique that I'm about to show you. But then I can still have areas like this where I'll do my traditional line highlighting and stuff like that. Um, so that'll still break it up. But it adds a little natural highlight. It less time than if I had to go back through all these lines and hit them all with two or three different layers. So I get a really good effect and it's, you know, it's pretty speedy. All right, so we're gonna show you how to do it right now. So stand by. All right guys, you see I got a Land Raider here. I tried to start it already and this is kind of what I wanted to show you. So the first layer that I'm gonna put on is a shadow gray. Now I've already dry brushed this with a you know, normal bolt gun metal or lead blitzer or whatever like that. And then I've come through the second layer of iron breaker. And then right now I'm about to do a layer of rune fang. All right. So don't worry about that paint. That was just, I was showing somebody else that technique, but we're going to finish dry brushing this right now. Give you guys a point of reference. So for this, I'm just going to use a large you know, dry brush. And part of this is kind of in the technique of how you dry brush. So as you guys know, just taking some, some paint on there. Everybody has their own technique. This is just how I do it. I'm gonna work the color and the brush. Now I'm coming here and I'm gonna hit it in a way in a certain direction of how the the battle would happen. It's kind of haphazard, but you see we're getting these little streaks and that's kind of what I want. Now on areas that are gonna be metallic, feel free to hit those even more. Now one other thing this kind of does is this kind of helps you pick out the details of the model. It's gonna give you a better point of reference on where to paint things in the, in the near future. Now we've already hit this guy up a little bit, so not gonna really matter. All right, so that's done. I'm not even gonna clean my brush, and I'm gonna go straight to the ruin thing. Now this, I'm gonna be a little bit lighter. I'm not gonna put as much pressure on the brush. And see all that? That's fine. That'll be good. Again, on some of these areas that are going to be metallic. I mean, you got to think about it, guys. This vehicle has been in service for 10,000 years. I don't know what the... Uh, The standard is for them repainting their vehicles. Some of these ports and stuff you can put on a little bit more than that. All right. So that looks good. This is one of those things where you do kind of gain a feeling of what looks good and what's not, you know, good. So, all right, so that's done. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab a standard brush and our next shade, reorganize my paints. All right, so this is some shadow gray. This will be hard for people to find. It's a lot darker than the normal rust gray. And here's the fenrisian gray. I don't know why they stopped making this color. Um, and there might be a, a different one to it. I have quite a few, so I'll probably be okay for a while. But... If you guys can hear that, there's actually a steel BB in there that I use it to help shake up the paint. And also, it does sound pretty watery, as you guys may or may not be able to see, but this paint is pretty is pretty watery. As you guys can see right, you guys can see right there. And that's like going to actually help us out. So when I come to start hitting some of these areas, I kind of want that paint to be a little translucent. 
so the steel kind of comes through there so I'm gonna kind of come in here and I'm almost like stippling with the brush but as you guys hopefully you guys can see that some of the metallic is actually showing through the through the blue paint some of these darker areas I'll hit a little faster All right, so you guys can see that first side is done. Alright guys, so uh, pretty much done. All the blue. Didn't take that long. I think I didn't miss over here, so I'll knock that out real quick after. But I just wanted to show you some other options. Do the same thing. I'm going to use this Mephiston Red. And I want to do some red trim on this guy. A little bit different than some of my other vehicles. I've done a lot of yellow. But since this guy's going flame, I'll do some red. So same thing with this red. We're going to focus on hitting it on the black areas and we're just going to thin out the paint and it's going to be dark and that's going to be good because we're going to go add second coats on that to make it brighter which actually will really help this effect. Now the one thing that's going to take a lot of time is just your, you know, gaining those the skills to control your brush and that you know it just comes with practice All right, guys, so you see the same thing with this, this red right here. I'm going to go back in now. You get some really dark colors there. Just brighten up some of the areas and leaving the uh, outside dark. So come in here. Now, if you want to get all sophisticated, you can you know, highlight this as well. I think just the layers of red kind of do its own thing. So if you guys are going for that grim dark look, less of a, sometimes guys make stuff look too animated for me. I'm not as much a fan. I mean, don't get me wrong, looks great, but.
You guys go. All right. There you guys go. So I'm going to repeat that process now. If you guys are you know, trying to get the base colors, you know, that whole three color minimum type deal, doing something like this, as you guys can see, I mean, I'll knock out the rest of this red in probably 10 minutes, throw some some face paint on this guy and some hair on his on him, and he'll be done. And for all intents and purposes, as far as a lot of you know people are concerned, this model is done painting. Now, of course, I'm going to want to come back and add more detail to it, but if you're just trying to get some painted models on the board to look good, to try to unify your army, you can kind of paint a lot in a group like this, get it to that one level, get everybody done, and then play, go back, and then add more detail for everybody at the same time, go back and do whatever, so you can kind of batch your paint. And you're not stuck on one piece for a long time, you're not being bored, and also you can practice your technique and get better. So that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you like that weird weather effect. In later videos, I'll show you how I go here and hit some thin lines with the rust gray and the Finzerinzian gray to add some more highlights. But if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. This looks visually interesting enough for me. And the end product, the end product is something like this, where you guys may or may not see there's some uh, different highlights throughout this. And it's kind of make it pop a little bit, but we are getting some really interesting textures like in here. Also, if you want to go back and hit it with some rune fang along the edges, that works as well. All right, guys, hope you liked that video. Uh, just remember to like us on Facebook and to follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, subscribe to us on YouTube. We'll see you guys later.